Hey everyone, welcome to the second edition of the Bearcat Coaches Show. I'm Turner Kirby, Assistant Sports Information Director, and I'm here with Head Volleyball Coach Jeff Reynolds. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks. You had a tough start to the season, dropped your first two to Lynn and Florida Southern, mm -hmm. but you guys responded back against Bloomfield. How did you guys find a way to come back that next day and respond with a pretty dominant win? Well, first of all, Lynn and uh, Florida Southern are two really, really outstanding programs. They compete down there in the Sunshine State Conference, and uh, that's you know that's where the national champions been in uh, Tampa. So they compete against those schools, and uh, we wanted to kind of start the season off with a measuring stick, and so um, you know we, we we battled pretty tough against those really good opponents. Um, and, and, you know, we're still a little bit away from being able to compete at that top level. Um, but we, we put up a good fight against both schools. We took them to four. Uh, we showed some resiliency in those matches. Um, made, made a couple sets that we lost. We made them close. Um, but then uh, we won a set from both of those schools and, and uh, thought we did really well there. So we, we kind of focused on the momentum from those victories in those matches pointed out some things that we did well and then we took that into the Bloomfield uh, game and that was a really tough team you know they're super athletic and and uh, just really uh, well coached and a good program so um, we we knew we had a battle on our hands so we just uh, kind of focused on what we were doing well and settled into you know um, a rotation a lineup and things and it, it worked out for us so and you talked about momentum, and it's clear you took that into this last weekend, take, made the short drive down to Aiken, mm -hmm. went 4 0, first time going undefeated at a preseason tournament since 2019, mm -hmm. and now a five match winning streak, also the longest since 2019. Jim. How does your team respond this weekend and allow you to go 4 0 and hopefully take this into conference play starting this week? Well, yeah, um, you know, again, there, there are two opponents that we didn't know a whole lot about, uh, Mount Olive and Auburn Montgomery. I uh, hadn't seen those teams for a while. Um, and so really, and, and we didn't have a lot of you know, film and stuff to work with, so a lot of that, the, the Saturday was kind of a result of scouting Friday, you know? And so we played Friday, and, and of course, Francis Marion is a longtime conference opponent that was in the Peach Belt. And, so um, we know their program, we know their coach. We, we played them last year to f and we lost in five at that same tournament. So that was, that was kind of been on our mind and, and so we talked about that. We, we studied their opponent or we studied their lineups and kind of uh, you know, worked on them, uh, knew that that was going to be a tough match. And then um, you know, the second game of the day was, we knew was going to be equally as tough against uh, North Greenville. We played them during the spring, and so we kind of had an idea of what we were dealing with there. So, um, you know, the, the kids just kind of all came together, responded well. Um, we, we went with a, a good lineup that I thought worked well with those teams, and um, they, they were gelling, and uh, everything just worked out that well, well, worked out well for us on Friday. And then we just carried that over to Saturday um, based on things that we had seen on film, not a lot, but then watching those teams play on Friday, then we got to prepare for them on Saturday, so. Who, who's been the player that stood out to you the most in these first few matches? Well, it's hard to point to just one. Of course, you know, our freshman, uh, one of our freshmen, Katie Miller, um, you know, leads the conference in a few statistical categories, ranks nationally in the top 10 in a few. Um, she's come in and she's just done a really great job for us. Um, Maddie Reed, our senior setter, uh, she's doing a nice job distributing the ball. Um, she's uh, on court leadership. Patricia Panta, uh, Patricia um, uh, Pantejo, she's um, uh, she's doing well. Uh, again, just a, a good leader on the court. Um, and then Hallie Huth, uh, Huth, oh geez, Hallie, uh, <laughs> Hallie Michael, sorry. Um, she is, we've had her filling in at right side for Olivia Dow who's been injured and uh, she's done a really nice job for us. So I don't know, it's kind of been a combined effort for us. So a lot of people stepping up and doing a nice job. 
good to hear. And now you have a non-conference match against Belmont Abbey before really diving into the conference play. Right. No Richard O'Leary against the defending conference champions and the Flagler Saints. Right. So how do you look ahead to the Belmont Abbey match? And then obviously, what can you do on Saturday to try to take down the conference champions? Well, Belmont Abbey is, uh, the, you know, at this point, they haven't had a lot of success uh, in terms of victories. Um, you know, and, and we're working on a scouting report for them right now. So um, that'll be, uh, like I said, you, like you said, it's a non-conference game. We're going to go up there and, um, you know, and, and uh, we'll try a few different things. we got a couple injuries that we're kind of dealing with. So we'll see what a couple different lineups look like that maybe might help us uh, in the Flagler match. So we're hoping to get Olivia Dow back for Friday and Saturday against Flagler at the right side, and that'll put up a nice block for us. We're hoping to get our junior college All-American transfer, um, Annie Holsinger from Michigan. Uh, we're hoping to get her back. Um, she's been out all season with a hip injury. So, um, you know, she, nobody knows about her, right, until now. <laughs> um, so uh, that'll be a nice uh, nice addition for us. So we'll, we've got some things that we haven't shown yet. So we'll see what happens uh, against Friday and Saturday. Plus being a home match. We're working with our fans tonight. We're going to have a fan engagement thing and we're going to teach them some cheers and get our student section rocking and rolling. So hopefully we'll have a nice home court advantage against uh, Flagler on Friday and Saturday. All right, Coach, thank you. Hope so everyone at the volleyball match on Saturday. Coach, thank you. Good luck this week. Thank you very much. Turn Kirby back here on the Lander Coaches Show here with Headman Soccer Coach Lee Squires. Coach Squires, you guys had an up and down weekend this weekend, to say the least. End of the weekend, 0-1-1. Uh, tough draw you got against um, Lynn, I think it was, mm -hmm. on over the weekend, and then obviously following the Palm Beach Atlantic earlier in the week. How would you rate your team's performances? Uh, the performances for probably 170 out of 180 minutes was maybe as good as as good as I've witnessed in my eight years here uh, it's just unfortunate that the other 10 minutes cost us two results um, we could have been three or four goals up and out of sight against PBA uh, in the first 20 minutes um, unfortunately you know missed the penalty kick missed a couple of other chances hit the crossbar and as soon as they enter our box one mistake and we give them a goal and um, you know, good teams like that will, will punish you if you if you give them a chance. So um, then, phenomenal to get back to to two two at half time against those guys. Um, second half was a lot more even, but unfortunately we couldn't defend the second phase of a set piece well enough, and uh, and, and they get the win. Um, uh, and then Lynn, you know, for for 86 minutes we were absolutely outstanding. Uh, scored three great goals. Um, could have scored multiple more. Uh, Backline looked strong, um, but ultimately, you know, towards the end where we made a few changes um, based on the 180 minutes worth of work that we'd gone through, uh, that the team couldn't, you know, withstand the limited pressure that Lynn applied in the last five, and we let them back in and just, you know, I don't know if we'll ever see a game like that again, but uh, we, we've got to take the positives of, of the work that we did in 90-95% of the two games combined and hopefully that's what we'll take away and, and that's what will serve as well moving forward. So you're talking about taking some of the positives going into this week, match up tomorrow against a really, really good North Georgia squad, actually I think they're nationally ranked now, and then a Tampa squad which is always one of the best in the country. How can you take some of those positives from this last weekend? Yeah, this week? It's certainly a big week for us, um, You know, two wins this week are, are really uh, straighten things out for us a little bit. I think we're right on the verge of, of being a top team, but ultimately, you know, potential can only take you so far. At the end of the day, we have to uh, commit to the cause and, and get the wins to, to actually be a top team. Um, I think the performances have warranted more than we've got. But yeah, North Georgia, I think they were in a similar position last year where they got off to a good start and, and we went down there and, and was able to take care of them. Um, then they beat us uh, here and then we beat them the third time around. So, you know, it's always a, it's a back and forth game. You know, I've got a lot of respect for, for Coach Pat and his, uh, and his group, and we're expecting another tough result, and they deserve to be, you know, where they are right now, where it's still early, and 
you know, hopefully we can start the conference off well. And then Tampa, you know, one of the best teams in the region, uh, you know, a super region year in, year out. Um, but we're excited to get back uh, on home home turf. Uh, crowd should be good tomorrow and, and hopefully again on Saturday. And um, there's a lot going on and hopefully we can give everybody, you know, a lot more uh, to cheer about than, than we had this weekend. Let's look on the individual side. Kevin Ruchewski. Three goals this last weekend with just Dane, Peach Belt Conference Player of the Week. How would you rate his performance and what are some other individual players who have stood out to you this last weekend? Yeah, Kevin's a great player. Um, now that he's got his, you know, from the spring, now that he's got his fitness in check and, you know, his, his talent and his athleticism and his just his IQ in terms of understanding the game and, and being a match winner, uh, you can see not just the, the number of goals he scored scored so far, but the quality of them. Um, it's, it's hard to find that, you know, throughout the region. So he deserves, you know, his individual accolades. Um, I'm sure he'd switch that for for two wins but yeah he's played well uh, you know there's there so many good performances and we used I think all 24 players that we took on the trip at the weekend so the depth is there some of it needs polishing up a little bit but um, yeah it's hard to single out you know any any individuals when you know we're so close to getting to phenomenal results at the weekend uh, and it's going to be the collective which which carries us forward yeah and you talked mentioned earlier Finally, after two really long van rides, get to play back at Van Taylor Stadium. How does it feel to finally be back for the first time this year? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a couple of weeks coming. Um, you know, even our you know both of our uh, you know scrimmages were away as well. So you know we're, we're looking forward to playing here. We've got a brilliant facility. Um, we're going to hopefully have a good crowd that can get behind the guys, and I know the guys are itching to play at Van Taylor Stadium, and you know it's. It's exciting, you know, any time you get to play at home and hopefully we can come out of it with two wins this week. So, going back a couple weekends, the program as a whole earned its 500 program victory against Chawan with a 2-1 win. What does that mean to you to be able to be the coach of that historic moment for the program? Uh, yeah, I don't think necessarily it's, it's about me. I mean, you know, I'm sure I've played a small part in it, but there's so many coaches, staff, administrators, and, and you know, most of all alumni that have... I think 42, 43 years this program's been going. This, you know, these hallways have seen a lot of guys that have contributed so much to to those 500 wins. And you know, I'm in focus for tomorrow is is to celebrate that and the history and the traditions of the program, but also to to get the next one. You know, and, and that's the hunger and the desire that this this program and, and the passion it's shown over so many years. You know, we want to continue that and push it forward and you know start getting the next 500. Um, you know, I might not be around by the time the thousandth win comes along, but uh, you know, we, we want to win the next game because that's the most important. Uh, but it'd be cool to celebrate, you know, the, the history and the traditions of the program tomorrow. Looking for win 501 in the Lander Men's Soccer Program history tomorrow against North Georgia is a code blue game, Van Taylor Stadium. Pre-game ceremonies will begin at about 5 p.m. We hope to see you guys there. Welcome back to the Bearcat Coaches Show. I'm Turner Kirby here with head women's soccer coach Chris Ayer. Chris, you had a one on one week this last week. Started off the week with a pretty dominant three nothing win over Mars Hill. Talk about that game and how you get, guys were able to dominate that match from start to finish. Yeah, I think we we played well. You know, the we were connecting passes, we were pushing numbers into the attack, we were keeping the ball the, the right way and you know, I just think the goals performed. Uh, it was one of those things that we were trying to do everything in our power to 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 work on the things we've been working on all, all semester, but I think it finally clicked. So it was pretty good. And then, unfortunately, on Saturday you felt the limestone close one nil score on. They scored early on. You guys just couldn't get the shot on net to find the equalizer. What what happened in that game that was a little bit of the disconnect to, that you couldn't find that equalizer? Yeah, no. They, so they scored. They scored about eight minutes into the second half, and uh, you know we played a, a pretty good first half. Had done some of the things that we've been working on all week, and you know just very 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 physical game, and just one of those things that we. You know, need to continue to get better. And so, obviously, you only gave up one goal in the last week. You guys are averaging under a goal per game average, giving up. How is your back line able to continue to success and not and keep you guys in games, allow you to potentially make comebacks or pull away like you get, did against Marcel? Yeah, we've got a good group. The kids work really hard. They they're organized. They know what they're they're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, just. Yeah, I think we do a good job of getting numbers behind the ball when it's time, um, and then and try to build out of that. So, I'd, you know, and I think everybody we have on our team does a really good job. 
And let's talk about a couple players. Emma Sexton has two goals and two assists. Gracie Beeson, one goal, one assist. How have they contributed to the success your team has had early on this season? You know, Gracie is a senior who is, is coming off a, a major injury from last year and has done a fantastic job of getting herself back into the mix and, and working her working herself into the, the rhythm of the game and has done a really, really good job with that and has led by example, which really appreciative and just has the right attitude to really get things done. Uh, Emma has done a good job. You know, she's, find, she's finding opportunities. She will continue to, to find those opportunities and, and will continue to put the ball in the back of the net. So both, both have done a really good job. And so looking ahead, you guys face USC Aiken this Saturday at 7. Had a couple of close games with them last year, but you went 2-0, both 1-0 score lines. What can you take away from what you've done so far this season and what you even saw last season to prepare for this game coming up? Yeah, it's always a very good game. It's the closest the closest team that we play in, in terms of conference, so it's always a, an important, very, very important game. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can take much from last year. I think they've got 18 new freshmen, so I think they've got a brand new team in a lot of ways. And uh, we just have to do what we do, and we have to keep working to get better every day and and to continue to push and, and train what we're trying to what we're trying to get and where we're trying to go. So it's it'll be a good test on Saturday. All right. Hey, women's soccer coach Chris Ayer. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Back here on the Bearcat Coaches Show, here with new sport head field hockey coach Robert Shank. Coach. Welcome to Lander, and how has it been getting adjusted to South Carolina? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, it's been great so far. Uh, the weather is lovely, of course, in the south, so I can't argue on that. Um, the, the drive, the travel was not too far. UNC is only like four or five hours away, Durham. So um, that was an easy, it was an easy move. And so you're talking about coming from UNC, obviously a very successful program in D1 field hockey. How can you take what you learned in your time as an assistant at UNC to what you're going to do here at Lander? Um, I have collected a lot of information about field hockey over the last, uh, I want to say, 15 years, uh, mostly overseas, and uh, luckily I was able to use all of my knowledge with UNC. Um, that was a very successful last three years that we had with them in the program, um, and I'm hoping, of course, to use all that information and knowledge that I had, uh, especially also in the last three years with UNC, to start it here and um, make sure that we have a strong program going forward. So you guys have been in preseason for a couple of weeks now. Who has stood out the most to you during your guys' time practicing? Um, definitely the goalies. Absolutely. Player-wise, position-wise, they're, um, they're very firm, very strong. Um, and yet, yeah, all the players themselves, we are very international. Uh, <laughs> starting recruiting five months ago, uh, the amount of universities and uh, American players that are available was kind of limited. So it's, uh, yeah, the second route was going internationally. So we have 11 internationals this year, a uh, small group of 14. But uh, we're looking strong, we're looking good. You talk, talk about the goalies. Kelsey Gibbons, obviously a transfer in from Coker, all tournament team a couple years ago when that Coker team won the South Atlantic Conference title. How, and she's, named, she's been named a captain for you guys. How has she been a leader early on as a senior? Well, as Cassie, as, as the grad student that she came from, Cooker, she, she's using a lot of her experience that she has collected um, with the universities, um, people knowledge, their social skills, and she's been able to put that in a really good use for the team so far. All right. And now you guys got your first game this Friday. You're heading up to Spartanburg, probably one of the toughest tests you're going to have all year. Defending conference champions and 10th ranked team in the country, the Converse Valkyries. Yeah. What have you seen from them so far, and how can you guys prepare for the game this Friday? Um, fu funny that you say that. Uh, social media, of course, is the, the main way of tracking other teams right now, and uh, Converse has been sharing a lot on the social media platform, so it's good to, to have a little bit of a look at there. Um, I do see a lot of them. I do intend to ignore a lot of things that I see and just focus on us uh, more than on them. Of course, they have a few ways of play that I'm trying to see how our team can, can stop that already. But uh, I'm going to focus more on what we have so far with the, the 14 players that we have um, and going forward from there. Friday, 5 o'clock, a new chapter in Lander Athletics starts. Coach, good luck. Good luck the rest of the season. Welcome to Lander once again. Thank you. Welcome back to the Bearcat Coaches Show. Turner Kirby here with head women's rugby coach Ken Pate. Ken, you guys had several players named to the USA Rugby U23 national team. 
What does that mean for your program about getting on that international level of exposure so early on in your program's history? Uh, it's absolutely massive, isn't it? Like, when we talk to recruits coming in, the recruits from five and seven years ago and ten years ago weren't thinking about international rugby, whereas the recruits of today are really keen on, you know, the next level. And we've shown in our very first year that we are going to send people to the next level. Um, it, it, it just goes to show you like where your program is and can, it, while looking at the, the, the programs as a broader spectrum, you, know, you have your wife and your Lindenwoods with the bulk of the teams and then outside of them, we were the next largest supporter of the, of the program. So. And so you're talking about life in Lindenwood. Talk about women's rugby as a whole and how it's growing and how you have Myra now, but you're looking to grow, need a couple more teams to actually become an NCAA sanctioned championship. Talk about how the sport has grown over the last few years. So this is my second NCAA school um, that I've coached at. And when I first joined the NCAA coaching ranks as a rugby coach, women's rugby, we had around 20 teams and they were all lumped together in one pool so the likes of a division three school could be playing a division one powerhouse like your armies or your harvards um, women's rugby is the fastest growing team sport in the world um, and and we're proving that um, with the amount of last year we had over a thousand applicants um, apply for women's rugby um, bringing 25 of those applicants to lander um, you know, on visits and on making offers to 12 of them and having 10 of those 10, 10 of those 12 sign with us. Um, women's rugby is, is on a different plane where other sports are kind of, they've hit their plateau where we're just getting started. And so let's turn it back to Lander Rugby. You guys had a really kind of shaky start to the season where you had two games canceled from you, pulled, got the rug pulled out from under you. Now you look ahead, you got a really tough Navy squad coming up this week. Lost to them barely in the spring. How can how are you guys fo getting focused from the toughness of the last couple of weeks before you face Navy this weekend? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, losing those two games were, you know, it does damage, right? Because you want to have a few hit outs before you you start playing the big dogs. And uh, playing this Navy side, we're super excited about. You know, the coaching staff over at Navy is tremendous. The players are tremendous. Um, we, there's a mutual respect between the two programs. Um, playing Navy is, for us, is going to be the biggest test that we've ever had. Um, and we set it up that way. We wanted to play the hard teams early um, to prepare ourselves for our league play, which starts in October. So we're really excited to get going uh, with Navy. Um, you know, you can't say much more about a team that's won the national championship like five out of the last seven years. You said you got conference play starting in October. Looking ahead to conference play, what, are you looking, what matches are you looking forward to the most in terms of that schedule? So there's, th for us, I mean, October is massive because, you know, we're playing Citadel at Citadel. That's the first time. And we're doing it on their family weekend. Um, so we're going to hopefully draw a big crowd out there. Um, they've always been, we've got great relations with that, Navy pro uh, with that Citadel program. So that's a big game. But I'm really looking forward to hosting our very first Naira match um, against Westchester. Also happens to be on, you know, uh, Homecoming. Um, so we're going to be one of the featured games of Homecoming, which is, again, another program first. We've never really been a feature of the school. And Lander is so, is so behind, getting behind rugby. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's such a great feeling. Um, but then closing out the season against Clemson at home, and it's a, a code blue game, Oh, I, I think just based off of the numbers, I say we might see the largest crowd ever assembled uh, for a women's rugby matchup against a team that we've beaten last year, but it's going to be a lot stronger this year. So it's just it's going to be a great October for for Lander Rugby. And women's rugby coach Kim Pate, Kim, thank you very much. Safe travels up to Annapolis this week, and good luck. Thank you very much. Back here on the Bearcat Coaches Show, here with head men's rugby coach Buck Billings, Buck. Before the semester, uh, Tomas Musi was named to the Paraguayan national team for the South American Games coming up for men's rugby. What does that mean for your program to have that national exposure for you guys? Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's great. Um, it's, it's, it's a testament to Tomas and uh, the hard work he's he's putting in. Um, his progress he's made since he's he's come here. Uh, he had a great seven season. 
uh, definitely one of the best players uh, in the nation uh, last spring in this you know in the seventh season um, I'm very excited for him and it is great exposure because he gets to go play on a, a much bigger stage the South American games every four years and it travels all over South America uh, this would be yeah, just below the Olympics, I guess, uh, for the sevens game, and, and especially in Paraguay. So, him getting this opportunity uh, brings a lot of exposure to our program, uh, especially given the progress he's made since he's been here. And I'm, you know, I'm hoping, you know, this puts our our uh, rugby program on a, I guess, bigger bigger map or um, draws a little bit more positive attention our way. And so looking back to this last weekend, had a dominant win over Georgia here in Greenwood. Five different try scores, and then Moosey was obviously four for five on conversions. How do you think you guys were able to dominate that game against the Bulldogs? Well, you know, we we have uh, Shotara Igashira uh, as our defensive coordinator, and he's done a great job, you know, uh, installing our defensive package and you know, his experience coaching in Japan and uh, the college, you know, the college game of rugby there is at a good place. And so, he, you know, he, he brought a lot from his experience there and um, even, you know, got to – you know, get some pointers from Eddie Jones when when he was coaching in Japan, and so that's just that's been great. It's given us a lot of confidence on the defensive side. That's to what you know kept the game low scoring for them, and then just our you know our back line stepped up big, and uh, we're able to you know see a lot of different people score. Uh, UGA is a, a great program and in the Division One level, which we just elevated into the Division One level. So getting a win over an experienced team that's been playing, you know, year in, year out in the Southeastern Collegiate Rugby Conference with UT Knoxville, with Clemson, U- University of Kentucky, you know, they're used to playing a really tough schedule. So that was, that was a big win for our guys. And so looking ahead to this coming week, and you guys start conference play with North Carolina. How do you guys? How are you guys preparing for that game? What are you looking for? And look ahead to the conference schedule coming up. Well, I think you know we did get a good run through with UGA. Everyone got to play minutes, and so that gives us some experience going into this game. Um, Chapel Hill has been a very successful program in, in our conference. Um, you know, and so so I expect them to be pretty tough, but I do think getting to have this run through with with UGA kind of gives us a you know a bit of momentum and some experience to some of our younger guys. But uh, I'm hoping will carry us to victory this weekend. But if our back line is is doing well and our defense can continue to improve, then we're going to give ourselves a, a chance to be in a competitive game. And sandwiched in between conference play, you got a trip up to Blacksburg, Virginia to face the number one team in the country in the Virginia Tech Hokies. How are you looking forward to that game, and what can we expect from a matchup between you guys and the Hokies? Well, I know, you know, they've, they've had a really strong forward pack. Um, you know, they're, they are the defending national champions. Um, you know, so, so they're going to be tough. And, you know, I, I expect them to to be physical, um, I expect them to be, you know, well coached and disciplined. But uh, you know, we're going to have to shut down their attack best we can, and you know, use our forwards and and, and play off our forwards to kind of give our backs more space. So, you know, if our defense can continue to progress into that week, then we can, you know, we might can give ourselves a, a chance to to be in a, a good game. And going back to awards, like I mentioned at the beginning, Cam Smith was recently named as Classic All-American by National Collegiate Rugby. It's his second time being named to it. He's the only player so far in your program's history to earn that title. What has Cam meant to your program, both on and off the field as a leader? Well, he, you know, he, he always takes care of business in the classroom. You know, he is one of our captains, so he also is a, a phenomenal rugby player. Um, as you know. A, and it is. It's it's on the pitch. It's off the pitch. You know, he, he brings good leadership. Um, sets a high standard for himself. And uh, you know, I think other players kind of feed off of that. I'm hoping, you know, we get more players in that uh, same you know same high achieving side on the the uh, in the classroom because ultimately that's what it's all about. You know that they, they're all going to go pro at something, but most likely it's not rugby. It's it's most likely wherever they came here to get their education in, and we want them best prepared for that. 
So no, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of Cam and his consistency and hard work. All right. Head coach Buck Billings, Later Midge Rugby faces North Carolina this weekend, this Saturday at 11 a.m. is your kickoff time. Welcome back to the Bearcat Coaches Show. Turn Kirby here with Headman's Cross Country and Track and Field Coach Kevin Scola. Kevin, this is the Cross Country Program's fifth year since it was reinstated back in 2017. What, what has been your experience coaching the Lander Cross Country team, bringing it back from its hiatus? It's been a blast just to see the improvement across the board, the improvement of the individuals one at a time. Uh, last season was our highest finish in the conference meet for the men and the women, so kind of hoping to build on that success. Uh, we had a school record last year on the men's side uh, that I think the men, both programs can really start to, that's a nice block to build on moving forward from there. And so we look back to this last weekend, guys compete at the Jaguar Cross Country Invitational. Girls were missing their top runner, but still had a good showing. Talk about how the girls performed. The women looked very good for who was out there. Uh, Mia Crankfield has been a rock for us for the last four years, and she's shown steady improvement each year. Uh, and to see her come out after a difficult spring doing an internship in Washington, D.C., she's looking phenomenal. This is the best she's looked since she got here. And so flip over to the men's side. Had three guys run their first ever collegiate race. I know from personal that, that that's not yeah. easy, but how do you rate those guys in their first ever collegiate showing? I thought they looked very good. They were there was clearly some holding back. Uh, every one of them hit the five k mark and suddenly went, "What am I doing with my life?" And I think as they get more comfortable with the eight thousand meter distance, the, they're only going to get better. I honestly think this team could be one of the better ones around in the next two or three years. So looking ahead for the rest of the season. What are, what are your goals for the program? Obviously, you're missing your top runner on the women's mm -hmm. side, but what are your goals for the program as you guys progress through the season? Um, individual improvement and to set up things for how we'll do coming into the spring, uh, especially on the guys' side when you have several guys that are probably more mid-distance runners, more 1,500, 800 type guys. The cross-country season serves as more of a base. So I think getting them ready to come out and then have a good spring, and that will just build up into an even better fall next year. None of them are seniors. Um, on the women's side, it's closing strong for the, uh, the seniors, the Mia, Gabby, Missy, Kennedy, getting them into their last season, showing what they can do, and then bringing along. Um, Megan Hamby has looked very good so far. Addie Vaughn has light and, night and day from last year. She looks phenomenal. And just seeing where they can get to in the next two months. And so you talked about the track program coming up this spring, first season of competition. How has that been, finally, to be able to get that track team to complement the cross-country team? It, it's been a huge benefit. Um, a lot of athletes want the opportunity to compete year-round. And then when you compare to also bringing in the sprinters, the jumpers, the throwers, South Carolina is a state that has a lot of talent. And even especially in the upstate area, to, to be able to get these guys an opportunity to compete and see the program grow, uh, the the excitement we've gotten both from campus and just from the surrounding areas has been phenomenal. I'm really looking forward to seeing them get out there starting in March. Head men's cross, and women's cross country coach Kevin Scola. Coach, thank you. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you, Terry.